Hello everyone. Today we are going to see the class 10th chapter life processes. This is chapter 6. So firstly we are discussing about how do we tell the difference between what is alive and what is not alive. It means uh, what is living and what is dead. So imagine we are seeing a dog running or a cow chewing curd or a man shouting loudly on the street. We know that they are living beings because uh, they are showing some movement. So uh, what would we think if the cow or the man uh, or the dog were sleeping? Still we will think that they are alive. But how do we know that? We see them breathing so that we know that they are alive because non-living things do not breathe. You have a lot of non-living things around you like chairs, handbags or bed sheets. You know that they do not breathe. So uh, this is the property which you can distinguish between the living and the non-living. So then what about plants? Do you see them visibly breathing? No, right? So how do we know that they are alive? So usually um, if you have plot, uh, potted plants in your home, you can see that um, the, the leaves are green in color. If you forget to water them for a few days, they slowly turn to brown and then the plant starts to die. So uh, how do we know that plants are alive? We see the green leaves and think they are alive. So what, uh, so what about plants that have leaves of other colors than green? For example, you have Ponsitia, the Christmas plant in which the uh, leaves are of both green color and a uh, sort of pink like color. So uh, even then uh, you know that plants grow over time. So you know that they are alive because only living things grow. Then uh, also uh, in other words uh, we tend to think of some sort of movement either it is growth related or not for uh, common evidence for being alive. But uh, you know that uh, you have small bushes you might have small bushes in your home which do not grow up after a certain height. So you know that they are still alive but they do not grow. And also some animals can breathe without visible movement. So using visible movements as the defining characteristics of life is not enough. We cannot just say that because a thing is moving it is living and a thing which is not moving is not living. You need more evidence. So uh, movements over very small scales will be invisible to the naked eye. For example the movement of molecules. You know that um, everything is made up of atoms and molecules. So, uh, for example, you can't see actually see atoms so, and as well as you can't see molecules. So, um, so is this invisible molecular movement necessary for life? So, we will say yes uh, if we ask this question to professional biologist. But viruses do not show any molecular movement in, until they infect some cells. And um, some uh, scientists are wondering whether they are truly alive or not. So why are molecular movements needed for life? So you know that living organisms are well organized structures. They have cells. So uh, cells group together to form tissues. Tissues do group together to form organs. Organs group together to form organ systems uh, and so on. So because the effect of the environment, uh, this organized ordered nature of living structures is very likely to keep breaking down over time. So if you are living in a home or a flat you know that it needs maintenance over time. For example um, you might call the carp carpenter or the painter uh, to paint some areas which has uh, faded over time. So the same way your body needs regular maintenance or it will break down. So uh, if it breaks down the organism will no longer be alive so for living uh, so the living creatures must, must keep repairing and maintaining the structures. So all the, as all the structures are made up of molecules they must um, move the molecules around all the time. So let us uh, see what are the maintenance processes in the living organisms. So first in this chapter we get introduced to life processes. So what are life processes? The maintenance functions of living organisms must go on even when they are not doing anything particular. For example, you need to breathe even while you are sleeping. So if you stop breathing that means you are dead. 
so that cannot be the case so you need to keep breathing even while you are sleeping so the maintenance function of living organisms must must go on even when they are not doing anything particular so even when we are just sitting in the class even if you are just asleep the maintenance job has to go on the process which together perform this maintenance job are called life processes so since maintenance process are needed to prevent damage and breakdown energy is needed for them so if you want somebody to do a work for you for example i told you in the case of an in case of your house you need a carpenter or painter to do maintenance work for you so do they do it for free of course you have to pay them right by using money so here if you need to do the maintenance processes you need energy for them simply you cannot do the processes so energy comes from outside the body of the individual organism so there must be a process or to transfer a source of energy from outside the body to inside of the body because since you need energy inside the body it must be transferred from out, uh, the outside environment to the inside so it is called food so uh, this process is called nutrition the process of transferring a source of energy from outside the body to the inside to the inside is called nutrition so imagine if the body size of the organism is to grow additional raw material will also be needed from outside so uh, life on the earth depends on carbon based molecule most of these food sources are also carbon based for example your rice it has uh, carbohydrates and uh, it contains a lot of carbon so depending on the complexity complexity of this uh, carbon sources different organisms can then use different kinds of nutritional processes so the outside sources of energy could be quite varied because the environment is not under the control of the individual organisms as you see around you uh, as you see around earth you will see a lot of places with a lot of different climates so the climate near the poles will be so cold and the climates near the equator will be hot so you know that the uh, climates are different all around the earth and they are not under the control of any particular individual organism you know that you cannot control whether it drains or uh, it is hot outside so uh, the sources of energy needs to be broken down or built up in the body and finally must be converted to a uniform source of energy that can be used for the various molecular move- movements needed for maintaining the living structures as well as to the kind of molecule molecules the body needs to grow for this a series of chemical reactions in the body are necessary so what you do is you take in the food and convert it into a source of energy which your body accepts for example you are from india and you go to you know, for example america you need dollars uh, if you want to uh, imagine you go to a shop and you want to purchase something you cannot use indian rupees right you need american dollars so what you do is that you convert your indian rupees to dollars for example uh, uh you need to uh, um, uh, uh you will uh, go to a, a currency exchange place i mean you go to the bank where you exchange your indian rupees to american dollars to buy a particular product the shopkeepers won't accept indian rupees so uh, same way in the body you need to convert uh, the food into energy so is for this a series of chemical reactions in the body are necessary oxidizing reducing rea- reactions are some of the most common chemical means to break down molecules so oxidizing oxidizing and reducing so oxidation means addition of oxygen to a particular compound and reducing means removal of oxygen or addition of hydrogen to a particular compound so many organisms use oxygen from outside the body the process of you need oxygen to uh, convert the food to energy so for that you need uh, your body doesn't produce oxygen on its own so you need oxygen from the atmosphere present outside the body so you take in oxygen through your lungs so the process of acquiring oxygen from outside the body and to use it in the process of breakdown of food sources for cellular needs is what we call respiration so what happens in respiration is that you have nostrils you take in oxygen through your nostrils and it travels to your lungs then 
the oxygen is take, uh, exchanged with your blood and carbon dioxide is given out so which is called respiration so in case of single celled organs organisms like amoeba there are no specific organs for taking in food because there are only cells yeah, because it is single celled there are no multiple cells so in such cases exchange of gases or removal of weeds may be needed because the entire surface of the organism is in contact with the environment but what happens in the body size of the organism increases and the body design becomes more complex in multicellular organisms all the cells may not be in direct contact with the surrounding organisms the surrounding environment so simple diffusion will not meet the requirements of all the cells so you know that uh, you see uh, um, the cells of your heart are not in direct contact with the environment and they don't take in oxygen just like that your lungs has to take in oxygen and it has to be transported through the blood if it has to reach your heart cells so uh, you know that how multicellular organisms are specialized um, body parts and they perform speci- specialized functions so we know about specialized uh, tissues and their organization the body of organisms it is not surprising that the uptake of food and oxygen will be also the function of specialized tissues but this poses a problem as since food and oxygen are now taken at one place in the body of the organism while other parts of the body needs them so you know that uh, the food uh, or uh, uh, let us take for example the air you breathe in arrives at the lungs and uh, but uh, the other parts of your body for example your heart cells and the cells of your legs cells of your other organs need it uh, so uh, this situation creates a need for transportation system for carrying food and oxygen from one place to another for example imagine a country so um, you may have a people from outside the country who sent you letters mails and other stuffs so when they send the letter they go to the main post office of the country so from there it has to be it is distributed to the sub post offices and the postman takes them from there to your home so if there is no transportation system you will not get letters to your home so uh, the same way we need a transportation system in our body which is the blood it carries the oxygen and the food uh, through the body so when chemical reactions use the carbon source and the oxygen for energy generation they create by products that are not only useless for the cells of the body but could be even harmful so when you um, convert food into energy you use oxygen for en- generating energy so uh, many by products are created that is product in addition uh, to the products which you require are created so they are not useful for the body but they are rather harmful you have gar- you have garbage in your uh, homes which uh, you need to dispose so the same way you have uh, so the by products need to be removed from the body and discarded outside by a process which is called ex- excretion so if the basic rules for the body design in multicellular organisms are followed a specialized tissue for excretion will be developed which means that the transportation system need will need to transport waste away from the cells to this ex- excretory tissue so not only you need to supply oxygen to the cell for their metabolic processes and for conversion of food to energy you also need to tra- uh, transport the wasteful products uh, to the a particular place where excretion will take place so that your body can be free f- from this harmful materials so we are going to see all these processes one by one in this chapter so uh, this is the this was the introduction of this chapter so while we taking the remaining parts one by one for most uh, such videos like this please subscribe to this channel and like this video thank you